Fletcher, and welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript covers the climate strike, talks to the field hockey team, and enjoys the cuisine at House of Teriyaki. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of the episode for more information about our school's production of Romeo and Juliet. Over the past week, the German DAX index has seen an ongoing slump, beginning on Monday with a 125-point drop. The DAX is a blue-chip stock market index similar to the Dow Jones, consisting of 30 major German manufacturing companies and acts as a measure of the overall health of the German manufacturing sector. With this constant downturn, many have speculated that this may be the beginning of a recession in not only Germany, but Europe as a whole. For the past week, President Trump has been embroiled in an ongoing scandal around his use of a personal phone call with the President of Ukraine. In this call, Trump encouraged the Ukrainian government to continue their investigation of Hunter Biden, son of Joe Biden, who in 2014 took a position in Ukraine's largest private gas company, Burisma, while his father was overseeing the rebuilding efforts of the nation. At the time, there was speculation of a possible conflict of interest, and Ukraine launched an investigation into the company since the owner had known connections to the former Ukrainian president who had fled the country earlier that year. The scandal exploded on Tuesday evening as the full transcript of the president's call with Ukraine has been revealed and the House of Representatives has launched an impeachment inquiry in the hopes of formulating a case against President Trump. Trump is accused of using a foreign power to influence a U.S. election, as well as withholding aid from the Ukrainian government. On Wednesday, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warned that sea levels are rising faster than believed and that the effect of some ice melt may be irreversible. This report highlights the urgency of timely, ambitious, coordinated, and enduring action, said IPCC Vice Chair Co. Barrett. What's at stake here is the health of ecosystems, wildlife, and most importantly, the world we leave for our children. I'm Jamie. And I'm Jared. This past Sunday, the Patriots beat the Jets 30-14, to leaving them with a 3-0 and for this season so far. And the Patriots didn't allow defense touchdown for the third straight week. Offensively, they were just held to a 98-yard passing. Hi, my name is Frida Carney Dunitz. Welcome to Another News. <laughs> Last Friday, youth from around the state took to downtown Boston in advocacy of climate change action and legislation. NHS students and other concerned protesters marched from City Hall Plaza to the Massachusetts State House demanding transformative action. This week, I sat down with Jordy Windsor, Serafina Foreman, and Willa Sipple, who headed NHS involvement in the Boston climate strike. 
So on September 20th, uh, worldwide over 4 million people uh, went on strike for climate and in the U.S. there were uh, around a thousand strikes and there's one in Boston and about 10,000 people showed up. Yeah. Climate strikes and the Sunrise Movement, which are both organizations um, dedicated to fighting the climate crisis <laughs> and we helped plan September 20th and get people from all over Massachusetts, especially Western Mass, to over to the Boston strike in order to have the biggest impact possible. And the IPCC report on climate change came out last October and said that we have only 12 years left in order to stay on the 1.5 degree warming target. Um, we knew that we had to take action and do something, so it encouraged us to start the Sunrise Hub of Northampton um, and participate in m more of those efforts. You know, I think like people often um, don't see environmental issues as environmental justice and climate justice, which is what Sunrise tries to focus on. So we really want to look at like people are already dying from climate change. And for a lot of people, it's not something they can just shove in the back of their minds because it's their everyday life. They see their families dying because of hurricanes, forest fires, floodings, things like that. Um, so we really need to understand that even if it's not directly impacting us, it's impacting people around the world. And you know, it's, there's frontline communities who have putting their lives um, at risk um, to try to fight this while other people who could be fighting it aren't paying attention. Although many NHS students attended the Boston strike, some who couldn't attend took to the steps of Northampton City Hall instead. So for all of you interested, the Sunrise Northampton Hub has meetings at 6 p.m. now at the Helen Hills Hills Chapel um, and that's on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Um, so yeah, everyone's welcome, open to the public. We really would love to have more young people and people from the high school there, um, so yeah. To do your part in saving the environment, a major first step is reducing use of one-time plastics like straws and water bottles. To learn more about the youth climate strike, visit Youth for Climate Action on UNFCC. Thanks for watching, see you next week. I'm Ben Raposa. I'm Jasper Fletcher. Welcome, welcome to Hamped Up! Y'all ready for this? This week, students around the country have taken to fields and courts in the spirit of competition, and one of the central underpinnings of competition is fairness of the rules. However, what happens when there is a perception that even when all rules are followed, there might not be a level playing field? In 2010, brothers Ben and Chris Menard led the South Adley field hockey team to an undefeated season and a Western Mass title. In a 2010 interview with high school coach Jen Quinn of Walpole High School field hockey, she summarized the frustration that she had with the Menard brothers and their impact on the league. She said, quote, you take a 110 pound boy and a 110 pound girl, he's going to be bigger, stronger, faster. They can generate more velocity on the ball. They have more power. So are Quinn's comments justified? To what degree, if any, does male involvement have in the outcome of field hockey success? We sat down with current field hockey coach at Northampton High School, Misha Began, to talk about her views on boys playing field hockey. Well, Coach DeLorme and I both think that males should definitely be playing field hockey. We find that in this country, field hockey isn't traditionally seen as a sport that men can play. It's seen more as a women's sport. And really this is because the gender norms or surrounding sports are merely just social constructs and they're not based in logic and they actually are outdated limitations. So just because a male athlete is on the field of women athletes doesn't mean that he will be the best player or even the strongest player on the field. It also is not a guarantee that the game is safer or more accessible for women if men are not on that field. And because young male athletes aren't really exposed to field hockey at a young age, their lack of experience and lack of skills can sometimes mean that they rely more on strength and physical prowess, which are traits that are seen in male-dominated sports. Um, but really field hockey is about having skilled play and about having um, a strong understanding of strategy. We also sat down with former male field hockey player Gus Lellman to gain insight on his first-hand experience playing on the field hockey team at NHS. My experiences playing field hockey as one of the only boys on the team was pretty normal, except for skirts were like really uncomfortable and kind of weird to run in, um, and bus rides were terrible. The music was just awful. I didn't think I had a lot of advantages uh, playing field hockey as a boy. Um, Partly because I'm terrible at running, but also because I was the goalie for uh, most of the year. Um, and I don't think that boys have a huge advantage. They might be a little bit faster generally, but there's a lot of stick handling and technical ability that uh, being a boy does not help.
Lastly, we took to the fields with junior field hockey captains Shay and Rachel to gain some first-hand experience on the skills it takes to play field hockey. Soccer lost their game on Tuesday to Westside 3-1. Boys soccer lost their game on Monday to Amherst 3-1. Girls field hockey won their first game on Monday against Mohawk 3-0. Golf won their match on Monday against Southwick. Both girls and boys cross country teams won their meet against Minichog on Tuesday. Football won their game on Saturday against Pittsfield 41-22. They have a game tonight at 7 in Amherst. To watch the rest of this segment, go to www.devilsadvocate.news. Hi, welcome to Spartan Craft. Today, we are here with... Mr. Mahar. So what do you do here at the high school? I teach social studies. Today, we are going to be making paper mache hall passes. So when they asked me what kind of uh, project I wanted to do, I want to make a hall pass with glitter in it. That way when uh, a student breaks my hall pass, which happens all the time, I'll know which one did it because it'll be covered in pink glitter. When I'm not in school, I like to play games. I play a lot of games. Um, I'm in the woods a lot. I hike, I hunt, um, and spend time with my daughters a lot. I have two kids. I have a 14-year-old daughter who's in the high school now, Maya, and I have a 10-year-old, Tess, who is on her way. Out of college, I love to write. I was a journalist for 10 years, I was a sports writer. And so, covering sports, I covered a lot of high school sports. And uh, in high school sports, you talk to a lot of people your age. And I just, I just got to like, I, man, I like these people, the, the state of development and the youthful kind of like and, um, optimism, because I'm kind of a pessimist. I just like being around your age group. And so I thought, you know, second profession, I want to I wanna work with people this age all the time. I've been charged by almost every wild animal there is in the Northeast. That's kind of fun. Why, which animal do you mean been charged? I've been, I've been charged by a moose. I've been charged by a fox and coyote. I've been charged by a bear, kind of charged by a bear, not really. I've been charged by uh, an otter. I've been charged by an ermine. Oh, oh my God, it's the glue. Smell the glue up close. What did you put in that? Did you put vinegar in there? You put vinegar in there. Mary, is this a practical joke? I think I'm doing Easter eggs now. That's pretty good, actually. Oh my god, what? Hers is good. That's so much better than ours. No, yours. Mine is not bad. Yours is junk. I don't know where the hell is. Oh, yours is really good. So, we're almost at Halloween. Do you believe in ghosts? Oh, I definitely believe in ghosts. I lived, uh, when I was younger, I had my own apartment when I was in high school, when I was really young. and. Uh, I lived in a haunted house and I totally believe in ghosts. So every time you took a shower, there was this like like closet door next that that, that was butted up against the, the bathroom where the shower was. And every time you took and so when you open that door, one of the hinges was broken. And so the door like like when you opened it, it would fall and make this really this really distinct noise. And every time you took a shower, that door just opened and closed and opened and closed the whole shower. Uh, and so I never wanted to go home because I went home to an empty haunted house. And so I did everything I could to get my friends to stay out and play with me. So, uh, so I said, hey, 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 here's something fun we could do. We could pretend, right, we ran out of gas. And then we could push, right, the car all the way through Adams. That'd be kind of funny to do at one o'clock in the morning. And so we start pushing the car down the driveway backwards. So we're getting some steam, we're getting a little, it's, it's moving. Like, all right, on the count of three, Everybody push really hard, and we'll really get this thing rolling, and then you know, and then we can we can get some good distance. So we all push as hard as we can. And I stand up, laughing, and I look over, and Kevin O'Brien is looking at me, and he's not in the car. And I was like, Kevin, you've got to be in the car if we're doing this. He was supposed to be inside the car steering it as we pushed it through town, but you can't stop a car. And so we we watched it roll down this our friend's driveway, and then over a cliff. 
Luckily, there's a tree, a big tree, and the, op the, the doors were open, and the door caught the tree. And so it was hanging there. And we were able to get it back up into the driveway, and we're all like, okay, okay, and there wasn't a scratch on it. Dude. <laughs> it was like the Grinch's heart. It just deflated four times its normal size. <laughs> oh. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I like funny hall passes. Hey guys, I'm Tucker. And I'm Nico. And today we're here at House of Teriyaki in Amherst, Massachusetts. Opened in 2000, it's been serving the Amherst area for almost 20 years. Well, let's go inside and check it out. All right, let's see what they got here. Nico, I actually like just, I've had sushi once. Try it again. I don't, it's really good. They have shrimp teriyaki? They're called the house of teriyaki. We gotta get some. The combo teriyaki, because that's like a little bit of a sample. Spicy sample. chicken? That sounds good, bro. Mild or spicy? I'm not, honestly. Are you a spicy kind of guy? Not really. I'm kind of a spicy, I'm a spicy kind of guy. That was disgusting. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go for some sushi, like for real. All right, um, I'm gonna get the chicken teriyaki. And then I'm gonna have the roll box, please. So chicken teriyaki and one Roblox. You got it. All right, good. Thank you so much, my friend. So where is the chicken teriyaki? Oh, right here. Right here. This is hot, so be careful. Got it. This looks amazing. That looks absurd, bro. What? Whoa. Oh, this is a Romeo and Juliet goes up in November. Make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the show dates. And if you're interested in stage management for the show, talk to Stephen Eldridge. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out www.devilsadvocate.com for full-length version of our segments. Steve, Steve.